Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And while you're here, don't forget, subscribe, like, and share our content with your network. Okay, so what do you know about infectious disease? I know we just came out of a pandemic and unless you were living under a rock, you may have heard about it. But what else is there? Very few of us know anything about infectious disease, let alone an infectious disease specialist who's not Dr. Fauci. Well, today I wanna introduce you to our very own infectious disease specialist here in El Paso, Texas. His name is Dr. Oge Olozi. Y'all say hello to Dr. Oge. What's up guys? Doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. My joy, my pleasure, sir. So we're gonna jump right in it because there's there's so much to talk to you about. First things first, what is an infectious disease specialist and what do you do for a living? So once upon a time when I was in med school, which seems like eons ago. I just figured the ID guys are the nerds, right? They're the guys that sat in front of the class. And I didn't think I was a nerd, right? I played sports and did all the stuff. But what I realized when I really got into ID, how I'm an officer triggered by a life event, was that we look at sort of the world and all the threats to the world, right? So infections or infectious diseases, anything that affects the human body, right? Any particles, bacteria, living organisms that can affect the human body. Everybody knows about it because of SARS-CoV-2 or COVID, right? But what they didn't know is that it can be worms or what are called helminthic infections, bacteria, or it can cause bacteremia. Um, you get a tooth infection, sinusitis, or a cavity. You may have an uncle or an auntie uh, that has had a hip replacement or a knee replacement. They can get infected. And so it really runs the gamut. And I often say that I'm the one person in the hospital that every other doctor knows, right? Because everybody's had an infection of one shape or size or other. Mm-hmm. That is that is crazy because to me, that sounds like you are extremely busy. Are there a whole bunch of y'all out here doing this or what? Yeah, when I moved to El Paso, there were probably nine or 10 of us. Now there's only five. I mean, I'm not counting the ones at Texas Tech because they're specifically focused on just UMC and Texas Tech. But in the community, there are five of us, about to be four of us. Somebody's retiring next year. And so my day is kind of crazy. You can wake up at six, get home early. Sometimes I get home late. But I go as far as Sierra East on the east side, and then I'll touch almost every hospital that comes back west to end up at Trans Mountain. Oh my gosh, that is a long day. So what got you into infectious disease? Because you're in medical school, hanging out. Oh, and y'all, full disclosure. So while he was in medical school, he met another doctor out there, and we interviewed her a few weeks ago. You may remember the other, um, Dr. Alozi. Yes, I'm the better <laughs> half. Yeah, the, there smarter, you go. the smarter doctor. Alozi, as she would have me say. That's but, right. Um, when, I, when we were in medical school, I was thought I was going to be a cardi, cardiologist. Okay. I either wanted to do cardiology or sports medicine. And so that's how I started my career. I was doing an epidemiology degree or a master's in public health degree in cardiovascular medicine. And after the first year, I just got bored. It just didn't click with me. And it's just like that sometimes. And I tell people all the time, if it's not your passion and you have the opportunity to switch, switch it up. And so I took a summer off, sort of chill, did some other stuff, some odd jobs. And then one summer, my mom, that summer, rather, my mom called me from Nigeria. She was in Nigeria and mm-hmm. told me that her sister had contracted HIV. Oh, and wow. so for me, that was a spark trying to figure out how to help her get medication, what the resources were in Nigeria. I mean, all these, I'm all these miles away in Minnesota and really understanding what global health was like. And I never looked back. Wow, that is incredible. Because, you know, you think of infectious disease. And I remember HIV was the only thing that anyone ever talked about. And you rarely hear about it now. So here's the dumbest question you've probably had today. Is HIV gone? (laughs) HIV is definitely not gone. But HIV is no longer a death sentence. And so when I was going through med school and a little bit of residency, if you contracted HIV, we knew that on average, you'd probably pass away within the next five years. 
either it was access to medications or the side effects of the medications. We all remember EZE and a whole host yeah. of people back in the day, Rock mm -hmm. Hudson that contracted HIV and then they were dead really yeah. quickly. Mm -hmm. Top of the story is, well, what happened to magic? Well, magic came at the time when antiretroviral therapies or HIV meds were really getting good. Obviously, wow. he had money and access, and so he had some of the early clinical trials. But the average HIV patient or the person living with the HIV is the right nomenclature for that, mm -hmm. is on one pill a day that they take once a day, and they live a full, long life. They yeah. will die. We all die. They're yeah. going to die from cancer or hypertension or a heart attack or a car accident mm -hmm. or pass or roads. Or <laughs> HIV is no longer a death sentence. Wow. And that is so interesting to hear because now, I mean, I'm old enough to remember all of the things that people were going through when HIV AIDS came into play and, and people were literally just dropping off like flies. Whereas now you, like you said, people are living long, very healthy lives for the most part. And you see commercials Absolutely. for this, you know, now. Yeah. And Super before that wasn't a thing. Not just commercials, prime time Super Bowl commercials. In fact, we just shot a commercial here in El Paso. And really? so it's going to be an El Paso commercial for a major mm -hmm. HIV company that's going to run in October, November. So I'll definitely share with okay. your viewers when that time comes. Dude, that, that is going to be awesome. Wow. So then the pandemic hits. We're in the COVID season, if you will. And yeah. I saw you everywhere. You were on every news station. You were being interviewed by everybody. I don't know if you got a call from Oprah, but I mean, you were being interviewed just <laughs> like that. <laughs> Have you recovered from all this, all that star power and all of that exposure? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. You know, it's funny when you talk about the star power. I don't feel like a star. I'm just a, a GDI goddamn individual. But um, I mean... One of the things was always funny to me. People would call me, but man, you're making all this money. You're right. on the Today Show. You're on BBC. You're on CNN. And I was like, bro, you, you do it for free. They call you and you just say, sure. Um, but uh, kind of going back to that time, that, you know, that was a time of transition for me. I was coming off a nine, 10 year career at Texas Tech where I did a bunch of things, IV, clinical informatics. I just needed a different challenge. And so I was sort of blessed at that point in time. This was late 2019. And David Chimp, who is the CEO of just Soul Medical Center, gave me a call and asked me whether I wanted to be his chief medical officer. And I was like, cool, this would be a cool job. I'll get to manage a hospital. I'll be CEO in four or five years. Because, of course, I have the arrogance of a physician and the hubris of a Nigerian. Right? It's a bad combination. <laughs> but those two things, you know, I was, I was smelling myself, as they say. Right. And so started it. Things were going great. And then I remember February of 2020, I was on TV with Saul Science and mm -hmm. SARS or COVID had already been going through China. And he yeah. said, hey, Dr. Lozi, what do you think? It's going to be something that's going to affect us. And I said, no, I'm planning to go to the Japan Olympics in the summer. Mm -hmm. Stupidest thing I ever said for the rest of COVID. And really quickly, we realized that this was not a laughing matter. And I mean, it, it affected the world. It affected our country. And unfortunately, El Paso got hit by two peaks in the summer of 2020 and in that really deadly fall period of 2020. We're on TV for the wrong reasons. The tents outside UMC and one of the highest rates in America. And for better or for worse, sometimes they say it's better to be lucky than to be good. Mm -hmm. I was in front of cameras a lot and yeah. I've done it before. And once I did it, they were like, hey, we like you. And sometimes I think, and this is me being sort of flippant, but I mean, maybe kind of real. I mean, I'm a black dude in El Paso. Sure. It's this sort of weird mix, right? We don't have mm -hmm. a lot of black in a Hispanic community mm -hmm. that speak English. Um, right. And again, I don't say it's derogatory, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. Right? Yeah. And so I was wow. able to communicate. I've always been, I think, a good teacher. And so I like to take complex thought processes mm -hmm. and break them into simple sentences. Yeah. And also, remember, we were really politicized at that point in time. And That's I tried so as much as possible yeah, to be apolitical about it. I was like, hey, these are your risks. This is what you can do to protect yourself. You take it or leave it. I mean, we'll see you in the hospital if you come. But if you can avoid coming to the hospital, all the better for everybody else.
that that's just so crazy. Like you said, you you hear physicians talk about it in in different ways, but this is I'm sure for a lot of people, this is the first time to hear a physician say it just like that. It is what it is, and this is what we can do. This is what we can't do. But if you're going to do what you do, you know what then yeah. can we do, right? That's crazy. Yeah. And so, so here you are, like you said, everybody's thinking you're, you know, making all the money hand over fish because you're on TV everywhere. <laughs> but what they didn't see on the back end, you were working really hard. Yeah, we had long days. I mean, I would get to the house around five o'clock. We had all these meetings. And what I didn't realize about corporate healthcare, or corporate America in general, is that whether it's ACA or tenant, is that they have all these protocols and there's all these layers. And so we would have these great ideas in El Paso. They were going to do this, that, and the third. And home office would say, no, you're, no, you're, not. No, you're right? not. And so that was my biggest frustration. But it wasn't just the no, you're not. It was, hey, we have to have 22 meetings to make no decisions. Wow. <laughs> and that was the thing about corporate healthcare that blew my mind. I'm like, yeah. these 23-year-old MAs are making healthcare decisions. They've never seen a patient. They don't know what death is. They've never held somebody's hand either having a baby or through surgery, or as they take their last breath, and they're making life or death decisions about our community. And so I think for me, that was one of the biggest things that I really railed against. But the days were just long. We would come in and we'd yeah. do drill after drill, meeting after meeting, and you couldn't go anywhere, right? Oh. So in as much as people were like, well, they were sheltered at home, I was sheltered on the streets. I had to go from my something? house to the hospital. <laughs> it's crazy. And then That's wild. it's not like you were in contact with people every single day. Sure. So, I mean, I actually take a badge of honor that I made it to December yeah. 18th, 2012, before I got COVID for the first and only time. Oh, wow. And and that is a lot of people did not get it. I didn't get it till way later myself. It, it was insane. So then, you know, looking at the corporate side of healthcare, you went on and you started your own thing. Tell us a little bit about your business, my friend. Yeah. So, you know, what's interesting is that a lot of people didn't realize that I'd actually started the business back in 2014 when I was at Texas Tech. And so in 2014, I was sort of ahead of HIV at Texas Tech and we were going different directions. I was going a lot faster than the organization could keep up with. And, you know, sometimes we were like, well, how did you know X, Y, Z? And I steal a phrase from a friend of mine, Brian Allen, who's at Del Sol. And he's like, it's easy to make decisions when you've seen the future. And so mm. when I was in Minnesota, a lot of the ideas that I started in El Paso, I had done six, seven years ago in Minnesota. We just weren't doing them here. So mm -hmm. our, I had the cheat code. To do. So I was implementing those things. But because I was six, seven years ahead, mm -hmm. I don't have the temperament. Doctor, the other Dr. Lozzi will tell you this. I don't have the temperament to be patient. And so mm -hmm. I'm all about, if we can't do it now, get out of my way. And right. if you can't get out of my way, I'm going to go somewhere else. <laughs> and so um, we have sort of separation they mm -hmm. allowed me to move my clinic to a different location which is over here on schuster and so since 2014 we've actually existed mm -hmm. um i continued it i grew it it was really slow for a while and then i was doing way too many other things and then during covid um one of the main reasons that i finally left del sol was one i wanted to do international health care and two is that they just had a line in the sand that if you were a chief medical officer you can run a clinic and it didn't make sense. I have about 12, 1,300 patients that are living with HIV. And I said, that I'm not going to take the, that sort of baby that me and my team have grown over the last decade and just throw it out to become a CEO. And so mm -hmm. we went through a rebranding last year. It was two organizations. It was Sunset ID Care and Southwest Viral Med. We're now merged under the title Sunset West Health. And so I really think of us as a full-service sexual health organization. So if you're an individual that has sex, then by. <laughs> full service sexual health organization. So in that, I, I was just going to say, so who are your patients? And you said, basically, if you're a person Everybody. having sex, you are probably coming to see Everybody. me. What do you yeah. see and, and as far as that goes most yeah. of the days? So I think once upon a time, we were purely and solely HIV. That's a foundational element of the clinic. But what we realized is that it wasn't just about HIV because my patients or my clients that were living with HIV had people that they were partnered with that didn't have HIV, right? right? So they needed sure. what was called PrEP, pre-exposure prophylaxis mm -hmm. to prevent them mm -hmm. from having HIV. Wow. Third, having college kids, uh, EPCC, wherever, that would come in 
after having sex or an interesting yeah. weekend, and they would want to be tested for sexually transmitted infections. Mm-hmm. So we started opening it up, sexual health testing. Yeah, and then to this space where the patients we had also wanted us to be their primary care doctor. So we absorbed some primary care. Did you? And one of the okay. biggest growing we have there right now is what I call AYA, for mm-hmm. adolescent and young adults, which is essentially 14 to 25. And it's a nice Wait. little sweet spot because wow. a lot of them are young enough on their parents' insurance, but they don't want to go to their parents' doctors. Sure. But they're not old enough to have a different physician. Mm-hmm. And all of them are talking about worried about or having sex and so we're in a very um judgment-free guilt-free zone it's not about if why or how it's hey come in we'll take care of you whether it's your hypertension your diabetes your conorrhea your chlamydia your condoms you just want to stay safe for your vaccines that's what we do man you the more you talk, the busier you sound. So, Dr. Rosa, if somebody <laughs> wanted to come out and see you, where would they find you? So we're over next to El Paso High on Schuster Avenue. And we actually changed our email recently. It's really easy. It's sunsetwest.health. And that's the email. And that's the website, sunsetwest.health. You find it. Okay, we're going to find you. Don't worry, you all. If you did not get that information, we're going to have it all down in the description below. And don't forget, while you're here, subscribe, like, and share our content as well. Dr. Alozi, my friend, before I let you go, we got to play a game. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. Let's do it. So this game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of a couple of things, and you just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play, sir? Right. Let's do it. Okay, let's do this. (laughs) All right. Here we go. Flowers or plants? Plants. Okay. Hotel or tent? Hotel. All day, every day. Tent? What was that? No, no, no. What no. is that? No, sir. I, and I the, get it. The, hotel, the, the nicer the hotel, the better. I'm talking about Waldorf or the W or something. Of course. Yeah. Why, if I'm why going out of town, I, need, I need to relax. Yeah, I don't blame you. Okay. Yellow light. Slow down or speed up? On average, speed up, but it depends on how far I am away from it. With my Tesla, everything speed up. You are so funny. Okay. Um, practical Joker, or I don't play like that. Practical Joker all day, every day. Yeah. Okay. The more we'll uncomfortable I can know make him. You feel, the better. Yeah. You're, he is the most <laughs> at any party, and he's the worst individual at any party. I'm just putting that out there. Okay. There you go. Planner, or I make it up as I go. So both. If I'm going somewhere, I'm the guy that told you in December of last year, Mm. I'm going somewhere in October. It's already on my schedule. I have a flight. I have a hotel. But once I get there, oh, I make it up as I go. Don't wake me up. Don't call me. Wherever you see me, you see me. And if you're out with me after midnight, anything that happens, happens. Ah, So much to go into right there. Okay. Michael Jackson or Prince? Oh, my MJ. Okay. Reality TV. Yes, please. Or I just can't. I just can't. I know. I can't. I tried one time. I, I yeah, still I haven't know. forgiven I, myself. I didn't even try and I still can't. No. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Mm. Super Bowl. The commercials or the game? And the game. Mm. Okay. Depends on who's playing. Who's your team? <laughs> I'm a Cowboys fan. Cowboys fan for life. I mean, I'm a long-suffering Cowboys fan, but hey, it is what it is. We're still the number one profitable sports team in yeah, the world. Yeah, I don't so care. We'll Nobody that. cares about your stinking stats. Y'all y'all are going to the Super Bowl every year, and it's been there since, you know, 1998. I don't the care. Ha- the haters the haters got to hate. Okay. Eh, eh, eh. And finally, mm-hmm. my friend. Wait, wait, hold you- up. Do you have a team? Of course I have a team. Yeah. Who's your team? I'm an Eagles fan, sir. Fly, Eagles, fly. Ugh. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah, we'll obviously I'll, I'll talk about Jay, that Jay later. Jalen Hurts is dope. Yes, Jay he Hurts is. Hurts is dope. I'll give yeah, you that. Yeah, and there's a whole thing. We'll chat about that later. And finally, sir, sure. what would you tell your 13-year-old self right now? 
Wow. You know, that life feels stressful. It feels hard. I mean, backstory is that I grew up as one of three Black kids in Minnesota middle school and then going on to high school. So it felt really weird for me. Um, I didn't know who I was. I didn't think, I thought I was ugly. I thought my nose was too big and everything. But that life is going to throw up challenges, that you're going to get through those challenges by singing a lot, by trying to be happy and just focusing on your goals, that um, things are going to look hard, but at the end of the day, they'll work, all work out. Well, you didn't turn out too bad, sir. Just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully there's hopefully there's more to go. Hopefully this that, is that the it end. Ain't I yeah, yeah, it ain't I hope over. I got some more chapters and I can help I other people so write too. their chapters. Okay, thanks so much for joining me, my friend. I appreciate you. <laughs> this has been fun. I really enjoyed it too. All right, everybody, that's it for this time. But we'll be back next week with more Faith on Friday presents.